I'm going to be discussing a topic that has <coughs> been quite controversial, I would say, since the summer, which is whether we should or should not include the smartphones in our classes. From the title, you can figure out that I'm already a supporter, but uh, I will try to convince you. So, not the, the pointer, not the... Oh, sorry, not the pointer. The <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as, as mentioned, uh, the experiment, which is related to the physics lab, has been developed in collaboration with the University of Coimbra, uh, with uh, Mario Gomez and Professor Ramos Silva. And I will start by asking you a question. I mean, uh, are smartphones good or evil? I mean, it's very easy to come up with uh, the negative side of the smartphones. I mean, they distract our students. Uh, if you think of your students in the class, they are eager for a break to check their WhatsApp, their Twitter, uh, their Instagram, or whatever they have. And that's because they are addicted to it. On top of that, they find it difficult to communicate with each other in a, let's say, face-to-face -face communication, but they will keep sending messages to each other. And of course, it reduces what we call the working memory capacity. And as educators, that's important. So the idea is that we should ban them, right? And that's exactly what France uh, did in the summer. And the moment that France did it, Spain and the UK started considering it is should do exactly the same. So you can see that uh, schools basically uh, that have banned the mobile phones get better results. So the point is that the debate started and several academics started to comment on the news what they thought. And the general conclusion that they reach is that they should not be banned. I would strongly recommend you to read this one uh, for a university level, this one for secondary education, and this one about what we would be missing if we decide to ban, uh, we could say, mobile phones completely from our schools. Uh, this book, by the way, which is also uh, was published, uh, I think, in August or something like that, it provides several reasons to support their use. First, I mean, uh, ABPs, which tend to be free, uh, are a wonderful teaching resource. Uh, it's a valuable resource uh, for the innovative teachers, and we can use it to teach, for example, STEM subjects in a, we could say, a more interesting way. So the solution would no, be not to ban uh, the uh, smartphones, but basically to educate our students on how and when to use them, so as to embrace the digital literacy competencies that we have to develop. So. We can talk about the bring your own device philosophy. The idea is we can use them. In our classes, we are talking of a device with over 20 potential sensors, even for a low-end smartphone. And the processors are as powerful as the one in laptops. I'm not going to mention the manufacturer, but a very well-known trademark was saying that their new phone was more powerful than their top-end laptop released last year. So imagine how good they are. By the way, I will then comment a bit on this uh, blog. So, the idea is we, how can we integrate it, in my case, in physics classes, even we could consider at the second dark education level or uh, at the first or second course <laughs> of engineering courses. And the idea is avoiding being a criminal, because Walter Levin used to say that teachers who make physics for him are so. <laughs> so, uh, I proposed an experiment together with uh, my colleagues from Coimbra in which we wanted to study pendular movement and elastic collisions uh, using the Newton scroll. It's a very simple experiment, but it's part of the contents of any physics curse at different levels and all over the world. So, what do we need to do this sort of experiments? So, of course, it's smartphones from our students. A Newton Scrabble, uh, it's four or five euros, depending on where you buy it from, but that's more or less the price in eBay. A ruler, and two APPs, which are available for free. And in fact, I mean, if you click them on the presentation, you are redirected to uh, the. the <coughs> so we arrange the different components in this setup, and we start recording videos. So, for example, a single ball, okay, moving, or one ball hitting another, or one ball hitting another two, one ball hitting the other four, two hitting the other three, or let's say three hitting the other two. What's the point of having so many different experiments? That you can give a different experiment to each of the groups in your class. They all 
have different results and then you, they can put together the results at the end of the session. So, they record those videos, then they open a bid analysis, which is a very nice and free app developed by a German group. And after <coughs> setting the coordinate a system and determining a distance, that's what the ruler was for, they just have to track the position of the ball frame after frame. They get a very nice graph in the app, but they can also export it to a CSV file and then work either in the mobile using Google Sheets or in OpenOffice Calc if you want to work with open source software in a computer. So, what did they get? I mean, this is a preliminary test with uh, secondary education students, so simple stuff. The red line is a theoretical, uh, we could say, result. And the black line is what they are getting. Quite close, I mean, for being just a first attempt by uh, high school students. And they can get, I mean, not only the angle, but basically the angular velocity, the energy that is being uh, converted from potential energy to kinetic energy, and so on. But you will say a pendulum is something easy. So let's try the one sphere hits another sphere. And again, they got nice results. So we said, let's go for something more difficult. One ball hits the other two, the outer two keep moving as if it was a pendulum, the one uh, that is the central one in red remains still, and the energy again is being transferred back and forth, the momentum is conserved, so everything was working as if it was an elastic collision. After that, we asked them basically to go for the one hits four, two hits the other three, or three hit the other two. And the results look nice, but the point is, how accurate is this? I mean, provided that these experiments used to be done with high-speed cameras, we had to have a few in the lab, they were expensive, uh, the alternative was buying professional kits. So, is it good or not using this method? We were expecting this period of oscillation. That's a theoretical one. And these are the ones <coughs> obtained by our students. So it's quite reasonable, it's quite nice. And what if we have more advanced students? We are thinking of university students, engineers. Okay. We can just use the same setup and the same idea, but making it more complicated. For example, propagation time of the disturbance to the system, experimental determination of the exponent in Hertz contact law, effects of dissipation, the sphere wobble at high frequency. For that, you will need a medium high, uh, we could say, end smartphone. For, with a low end smartphone, it's difficult to track that sort of movement. But same experiment, uh, more tricky, more challenging, but same equipment. So, conclusions. What did we learn from this? First, that, I mean, we don't need to buy expensive equipment, so we cannot make excuses about not having practical sessions. We just have to integrate smartphones in our classes instead of buying them. A cheap toy, we perhaps even with only one computer <coughs> struggle, all the students can record using the same Newton's trouble in something like 10 minutes. The session takes less than one hour. So it's possible to have a practical experience on this topic. If you have other different topics, then check the blog that I mentioned before. That one, it's not by me, uh, but keeps posting different articles that cover different topics in physics. And another science, we could say, technology engineering disciplines. <coughs> Then, second conclusion, uh, we can use the smartphone to do the experiment in a quite accurate way, uh, both for, uh, we could say, secondary school students and for our university students that require more challenging tasks. <coughs> and then the conclusion that is not written over there, but is the one that I care about most, that was the satisfaction of the students. The point is that when we explain the experiment, most of our students uh, have very low expectations. They have a low confidence in being able to do it. So the moment that they realize that they were getting nice results, you can imagine I mean, uh, the degree, we could say, of satisfaction with the experiment that they uh, recording in the post-experiment uh, uh, questionnaires. Um, what I hope to uh, transfer is the idea that you can use smartphones in your classes, you can make those classes more interesting, Instead of banning them, you have plenty of available resources already online, so give it a try, please. <laughs>